Okay, thank you everyone, and uh, I will now start uh, my talk. So, um, a bit thing about me, I'm Florian Lemaitre, and I work um, at a new company. And um, just quickly, um, I have a cloud expert position, but uh, I'm, um, I was, I'm a PhD in uh, HPC, uh, so um, I'm very uh, wide. Uh, I have a very wide um, expertise. So, let me tell you uh, a story. And um, once upon a time, long before the incident, there was a man, a man that has simple ambitions. He knew well Terraform and wanted to use a brand new feature of clouding for his infrastructure. At that time, clouding already supported Terraform, but did not have implemented the new feature in their plugin yet. The man said to himself, well, the feature is already present in the clouding uh, CLI. I can act something uh, with a neural resource and some local provisioner. And uh, it worked well enough at that time. But soon, uh, the man wanted to modify the configuration of his resource. And uh, he quickly found, horrified, that half of his infrastructure was gone. Indeed, it depended on that very resource. And Terraform had chosen to recreate it because it could not be updated in place. How could it? It's just another resource after all. Once recovered from this uh, disaster, he thought, I could write my own provider that would allow me to execute a command at creation and deletion, but more importantly, at modification. So he started to look at the documentation on how to create a Terraform plugin with the hope to be a quiet and easy journey. But he quickly found that the only way to write a Terraform plugin is to use either the SDK or the plugin framework, both written in Go. But the man knew nothing about Go and had no plan to learn it. Little did he know that Terraform had also no plan to support anything but Go. And after looking everywhere he could on the internet for an alternative, he realized that none existed. So he resigned himself to learn the gopher ways. And he followed tutorials after tutorials, and finally was able to write his plugin. It was nothing shiny and it barely worked, but it sure was something. So during uh, its exploration, the man found in the documentation an interesting feature of Terraform. In theory, it is possible to have map blocks, which would enable some fancy resource definitions like this one with the read block and the key resolve. This is an example. But reality crushed again the man's hope, as this was not supported neither in the SDK nor in the plugin framework. The man was very sad. He could not achieve his vision, and the level of quality uh, he aspired to was just out of reach. The story could have ended there. But I would not be here today to tell you that story, for I am the man of the story, as you have probably guessed. So what happened next? I basically, I went down the rabbit hole and I dug the documentation even further and started to look at TF code itself. That's why that was quite a journey. And I realized that the main part uh, used gRPC and I already had some experience with it. So, for those who don't know, gRPC has official support for a dozen languages, and even more unofficially. So I took the opportunity to use Rust in an actual project, 
And this is how I started my journey for oxidizing TF. Oh, and by the way, for the rest of the presentation, I will talk about TF, as everything I explain is valid for, for both Terraform and Tofu. So in theory, the communication between TF and the plugin is simple. The, pl the plugin is a gRPC server that TF requests. But if we look into the details, uh, we can see there are four gRPC services defined in the uh, TF code. The first one uh, called provider is clear enough. Uh, that's just the TF plugin service used by TF to tell the plugin to create, update, and destroy resources. Uh, the next one, gRPC STDIO. Uh, this one is used to um, let the plugin log messages back to TF. Weird way to, to do it, but fair enough. Next one, gRPC controller is used to gracefully shut down uh, the plugin and appears to be redundant with the stop provider uh, call from the provider service. But actually, the stop provider call in, um, in the provider service is never called, and only the gRPC controller shutdown is called. And the last one, gRPC broker, appears to be unused by TF, and I have absolutely no clue what it's for. So if we dive into the, the detail of um, apply request, we can see that TF uh, sends the prior state, the planned state, and also uh, the configuration of the resource, as well as some other stuff, uh, using dynamic value, and expect the new state back in a dynamic value also. And the dynamic value is defined elsewhere in the proto. So this is the definition of the dynamic value. And as you can see, it's either um, a message pack or a JSON uh, encoded byte string. Which means that for the provider to, to work with TF, it has first to support protobuf for the gRPC uh, uh, layer, as well as JSON and message pack for encoding and decoding. So that's basically three serialization scheme. However, uh, gRPC is only part of the equation. In reality, TF has a kind of a meta protocol on top of gRPC. And uh, this is a small uh, UML diagram for those interested. And basically, TF starts the provider process and pass uh, a certificate in uh, environment variables. Then the provider uh, is expected to generate its own certificate, start a gRPC server using MTLS with both certificates, and it uh, prints uh, the info connection back to TF on uh, STD out with uh, the certif its uh, own certificate as well as uh, the protocol version, and after that, TF uh, starts uh, perform gRPC request, first op opening the gRPC STDIO stream, and then perform some uh, unary uh, gRPC calls, first to get the provider schema, then validate the provider config, configure the provider, update, upgrade the resource state, read the resource, validate resource config, to finally plan the resource change, finally. Then once it has done that, ask for a shutdown and wait for the provider process to end. And this is repeated for every actions and every resources. 
a bit complex if you ask me. So now that we have a good understanding of how TF works, this is some Rust code uh, to implement uh, your uh, own uh, provider uh, with Rust. And uh, on the left, this is the trait definition for resource. So for those who are not familiar with Rust, traits are um, a bit like interfaces uh, and defines what a type must um, implement, like uh, methods and uh, related types, to be considered a resource. And here we have uh, many methods, like a schema to get um, the information uh, of the resource, but also validate, read, plan, uh, create, update, destroy, and stuff like that. And also a state, which is the type used by the resource to, um, to encode it, its own state. So you might be familiar with the null resource uh, from uh, the, standard, uh, the standard registry. So here is a simple implementation of that resource. Basically, you have the null state, where you have a field ID, which is a string, and a field triggers, which is a map of string. And then I say to Rust that I implement the resource rate for my null resource, where I say, the state of my null resource is the null state. And here's an example of the create uh, method, where basically the framework um, will call um, with the plan state, the config state, the private state, the provider meta state, and your provider is expected to return uh, the new state and the new private state. And here, as it is a null uh, provider, it just generates a random ID and uh, call it a day. One important method to implement is the schema method. And uh, the schema method is uh, used to uh, give TF all the information about the inputs and the outputs resource have. So you basically define uh, the main block and uh, you specify which attributes within uh, your, um, the resource you have. You can also uh, define uh, nested blocks, more on that later. And here in, in this example, I define two attributes. The first attribute ID of type string, which is uh, a computed attribute, which means it is an output as far as TF is concerned. And the triggers attribute, which is a map of string. And this one is a required attribute, which means it's an input attribute. And uh, I want to highlight the fact that those attributes correspond to the fields I defined in my state earlier. So now that I have a resource, I need to define the provider itself. And the, the way to define the provider itself is basically the same as the resource with a custom trait, with a config type and uh, some, uh, some uh, methods like a schema, validate, configure. But more importantly, get resources. And the get resources is called by the framework to know what resources is implemented by the provider. And uh, it's a map where the key of the map is the, is the name of the resource. So in the case of the null resource, the name of the resource is just resource. And the value is um, the, the, the null resource itself. And by the way, the provider can also have a, a config state 
but uh, for sake of simplicity, here it's just a value empty, so nothing. So once we have defined uh, our resources and um, provider, we can just call serve on our provider and specify what is the name of our provider. So in our case, it's null. So if you remember, uh, I have a resource called resource, a provider called null, so the actual uh, resource name is null resource. If you remember a few uh, slides back, I, I talked about map blocks, which apparently is supported within TF, but mm, in no frameworks or SDK. So is it possible uh, with uh, my Rust framework? Of course it is. And it's just uh, as simple as defining a new block. So in my example, read, which is a nested block of type map. And then define uh, within the block uh, everything needed as any other kind of blocks. On the state implementation of things, now my state has the read field, which is a value map, because it's a map block, of nested type. And my nested type in, is just another type with just a command field, uh, which is just a string. And this, what allows to uh, write uh, resources and data sources like this one. Now I can say read, resolve, and specify uh, attributes within, and have another block, uh, read something else, and it will be encoded in my state with just uh, two items in my map. So, everything is good and all, but I've just the code in Rust, and I need to publish my provider. And as a reminder, uh, from what I understand, the way to publish providers uh, with, uh, with Terraform is basically to create a release in a GitHub, and then the Terraform registry uh, will fetch the, the release and uh, call TF plugin docs to generate the documentation and then uh, generate the, the signature and the release metadata to then upload it to the TF registry itself. But uh, if you have followed me uh, until now, you might remember that we do not have Go, we have Rust. So we cannot do that. So what I did is basically I created a pipeline within uh, GitHub Actions. And first thing first is to compile a static binary with Rust. And then I still need to generate uh, the documentation. So I still need to call TF plugin docs. But I call it with a fake Go. And TF plugin docs will think uh, it will uh, compile with Go, but instead it will just call a shell script that will copy my binary, by my binary into uh, the destination. And then continue with ge generating the documentation. Of course, I also need to generate the signatures and the release metadata into the release. And once it is released, I have another action that will aggregate all the releases to generate uh, some JSON files and upload it to, to GitHub pages. And this is fairly easy to do because the um, provider registry protocol is just a bunch of uh, JSON files and uh, links. So this is an example of my uh, release of my provider where you have all the dips with the binaries. Uh, it's uh, their signatures. 
some manifest in JSON and a documentation zip. And this is basically it. So um, in conclusion, uh, with all this, I was able to um, write my own uh, provider with Rust, which uh, uses features that are not available in uh, other uh, frameworks as far as I know. And I'm pretty happy because I can, I have published it uh, in um, my GitHub, uh, the GitHub pages uh, of my company. And uh, it works um, with both Terraform and Tofu with no need to change this. So with my work, um, I basically paved the way to create TF plugins from scratch in any language. I have uh, demonstrated it by implementing uh, and publishing a TF plugin framework in Rust. And uh, I published um, my own provider for uh, generic uh, resources in Rust. And uh, the last thing uh, remaining is to write plugin frameworks in other languages. And this is where I leave it to you. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions? Yeah, I think there's one. Uh, oh, sorry, Mike. Uh, hi, would you be able to talk a little bit about what you're hosting in GitHub Pages? And are you hosting the version documentation for like a, or uh, the versioning information for the provider registry? Or are you hosting documentation as well? So um, I'm uh, publishing mainly the, the manifest JSONs and binaries. Uh, in theory, I will not have much to change to publish the documentation, but for now, uh, as you can see, it's just a docs.zip uh, in the assets of the release. Uh, but the interesting is, thing is, um, everything is in GitHub pages. So uh, as you uh, you worked on uh, the registry, you you might know that there is uh, the dot well known terraform.json that should be at the root of the registry. Mm -hmm. And this is also handled uh, with the uh, GitHub pages. And uh, basically I just uh, redirect it to um, the GitHub pages of my um, of my provider. Awesome. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. If there's no questions, I just wanted to say that this was extremely cool and the presentation was excellent. <laughs> this was Thank really you. fun to watch. Thank you very much. All right. Good job.